Uh, welcome everyone to today's market, virtual market design seminar. We are very happy to have Fuhito Kojima today as the speaker. Uh, Fuhito is professor at the Graduate School of Economics of the University of Tokyo and at the University of Tokyo Market Design Center. He's well known for his influential work on matching markets. And today he will talk about a paper on a fundamental question on weak monotone comparative statics. We are also glad to welcome Chris Shannon from UC Berkeley as a discussant, who of course is well known expert on the topic due to her econometrica paper with Paul Milgram on monotone comparative statics from 1994, but also from multiple related follow up papers. So thanks to both of you, Fujito and Chris, for being here today at the time of the day that I assume isn't the usual seminar time for you. Uh, let me quickly remind uh, the audience of the procedures for the seminar. If you have a question, please raise your virtual hand or write your question down in the chat. And in the next break, you can then pose your question to Fujito. If you prefer that I read out your question, uh, please write me a chat message. And there will be some breaks during the talk and time to answer remaining questions after the talk. So that's it from my side. And Fujito, we very much look forward to your talk. The floor is yours. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marion. So oh, it's, it, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, thanks uh, again um, uh, to Chris uh, for uh, again to be uh, discussing uh, early in the morning for her. And um, so uh, um, so my uh, my co-author, Jim Kim, is um, in the audience, so uh, he could answer uh, your questions also. And uh, I'm not sure if Yonk is already here, but he might uh, be able to join too. Okay. Anyway, so let me begin. So uh, I think we have one hour and um, so, uh, okay, so uh, there are a lot of material. So let me actually kind of like, I, I, I already shared, I believe, uh, the uh, slide with a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't expect to be able to do uh, everything today. Uh, so let me skip from time to time. But if you want to ask uh, about any part of the talk, please uh, feel free to stop me. Okay, and uh, okay. So uh, uh, as Marion has already said, so uh, today's topic is monotone comparative statics. All right. So it's probably not the typical uh, topic that um, uh, uh, is in this series. So, and at least uh, this is my first paper on the actual uh, uh, comparative uh, uh, topics. And uh, for those of you who are interested in like market design issues in the matching context, uh, which is, is uh, my field of expertise, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, comparative statics um, uh, will uh, have application to a matching problem and how the uh, constraint, introduction of constraints uh, might change the uh, 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 outcome and welfare of uh, players and so on. Okay. And uh, of course, the uh, comparative statics is such a fundamental question. So that should be, that's related to uh, you know, optimization and all sorts of economic uh, predictions. So to that extent, I believe that uh, this topic should be interesting to, uh, well, uh, the uh, market and the audience. Okay, so let me, let me actually e e go to the uh, con uh, content. Okay, so like I said, the e topic is about, um, about combative statics. And I guess everybody knows what combative statics is. So that's a study of, uh, uh, how the predicted behavior uh, changes as the environment changes. And uh, today's topic is more specifically about monotone comparative statics. Okay, so let me call the MCS uh, to, uh, for, for short. And uh, Marion already said that um, the, there are fundamental papers and one of them is Milgram Shannon. So that's an important paper to keep in mind uh, today. So that's a sort of uh, point of reference today. Okay, uh, what did they do? Well, they did a lot of things, but uh, the, so they sort of spread out this research um, um, agenda of, uh, uh, of MCS. And uh, among the important points about MCS is that, well, um, sorry, MCS is that unlike some other types of comparative statics, uh, uh, you know, you don't really need to uh, assume a lot of uh, 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 um, properties on functions like um, uh, like differentiability and smoothness and so on. Instead, the uh, theory is based on order relations. So that's that's very nice. Um, 
And uh, um, turns out that it, the uh, MCS needs to overcome a lot of uh, sort of uh, issues. And uh, among the main issues is that, well, the uh, economic predictions uh, are usually set valued. So it's not a unique prediction, right? So if you think of uh, optimization, the optimi optimum uh, uh, could be, it could have multiple uh, solutions. Uh, in equilibrium, multiple equilibria is very commonplace and so on. So when we talk about uh, uh, the, this idea of, uh, you know, uh, saying something about how the uh, behavior might change, then you might need to, uh, uh, you know, you cannot just say, well, uh, behavior uh, changes from one point to another when the environment changes, because you know uh, uh, there may be multiple uh, uh, possible uh, uh, predictions, right? So what do we do? Well, what do the, the, the people do in this literature? Um, so the uh, instead of sort of uh, uh, having some uh, ad hoc selections, so typically they they define the uh, order uh, over a subset of outcomes, right? So we need a language to uh, compare sort of like sets of uh, outcomes, okay? But in order to do that, then we need to define what it means for a subset to be higher than another set, all right? And the, the most, although not all, uh, uh, papers in this literature uses uh, the uh, particular uh, set order called the strong set order, okay? And um, um, all right. So uh, Chris has uh, papers with other uh, orders too uh, uh, and some others as well, but um, the uh, overwhelming number of papers seem to use this order. And um, so what is a strong set order? So let me actually give a formal definition. So we begin with a poor set, partial order set, uh, X, okay? And uh, this is a partial order. Okay, so I use this notation throughout. And uh, so this is this partial order is uh, on the e, each element of the uh, set X, all right? But then from there, we define the e, e induced uh, set order. Uh, here's a strong set order, okay? So uh, I use this notation. So X prime and X double primes are uh, subsets of uh, uh, X, all right? And uh, we say X double prime is higher than X prime uh, according to strong set order. Well, let me say X double prime strong set dominates X prime, okay? Uh, if uh, this condition uh, holds. So what is this, is this condition? Uh, take any element from the first set and uh, take any element from the second set, okay, X prime and X double prime respectively, then uh, take the join of these two points uh, that is in the second set and the, uh, the meet of these two points are in the, uh, 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 in the first set, right? So uh, join a uh, uh, sort of soup and uh, meet as a uh, inf. So if you take the uh, soup of these two points, then the, that's in the supposedly higher set and uh, uh, and uh, infimum of the two points from two sets are in the uh, supposedly smaller sets. Okay, so this is a strong set order. Okay, and uh, uh, so uh, why is that uh, useful? Um, sorry, the e. um, um, sorry, so before that, so before explaining why this strong set order is useful, let me actually talk about another order, all right? So this weak set order, uh, is another set order, and that's going to be our focus today. All right. The so I say take any subsets x double prime uh, and x prime, and I say that uh, set subset x double prime weak set dominates x prime if two conditions are satisfied. And uh, let's look at the first condition. Okay. So I call it the the, the, the upper weak set order, and it says the following. Take any point from the first set, uh, little x prime, then there exists some element from the second set with the property that the, uh, the second element is uh, higher than the, uh, weakly higher than the first element, right? So, in, in other words, take any prediction from the first set x prime, then uh, I can guarantee that there's something uh, x double prime here uh, from the second set that is higher according to the original uh, uh, partial order, right? So that's a sort of intuitively 
it kind of says that well, or x double prime, the set the x double prime is higher than x double uh, x prime. And the second condition is a sort of like symmetric one, a symmetric condition, which says take any point uh, from the second set, uh, there's some uh, element from the uh, first set that is lower. Okay, so these are sort of uh, a symmetric condition. So if these two conditions are satisfied, it essentially says, you know, uh, choose any point from uh, either of the set, then, you know, then we want to say we, we can find um, the sort of uh, another uh, uh, element from the other set uh, with the desired uh, uh, order relationship. Okay. And uh, um, one observation is that strong set order implies weak set order, right? But not vice versa. Okay. All right. So that's been a lot of definitions, I guess. So, um, um, but let me just say a, a few more words. Okay. So the like I said, the strong set order has been very e e important, and uh, um, the e why is that? So, um, so here's a result from uh, Milgram Shannon. Um, okay. So let's think of a individual optimizing over some sets of uh, possible sets of outcomes. All right. So f is an objective function, and m of f is a set of maximizing uh, elements, um, okay, uh, maximizing outcomes, uh, maximizers of this objective function. Okay, and then uh, Milgram Shannon well, MS gives the is, is conditions under which the is, um, such that take two payoff functions u and v, okay, and uh, they give conditions under which the e maximizer of objective function V strong set dominates the maximizers uh, of the e, e UTT function U, uh, uh, the other objective function U, right? And that's a well-known uh, uh, well conditions. So namely, uh, first is that uh, this fun UTT function V single crossing dominates U, and the other is that U and V are both quasi supermodular. Okay, so in fact, um, the MS also uh, shows that these two conditions uh, actually characterizes uh, the guaranteed um, the uh, the strong set domination to be guaranteed uh, when they uh, when the problem also varies the choice set. Okay, okay. So namely, the if you if the uh, individual might sometimes needs to choose from a sublattice from this uh, uh, set, which is a sublattice uh, from this X, and then optimize. And uh, uh, if this strong set domination uh, relationship granted for any choice of such uh, um, uh, such sublattices, then actually the uh, functions U and V should all, always satisfy these conditions. So this is actually if and only if condition for strong, domina uh, strong set domination. So that's so uh, for this reason, at least uh, partly for this reason, strong set order is sort of important. Um, okay. However, it turns out that uh, if we think about uh, other problems away from the individual choices, then it turns out, out that, well, strong set domination is so strong, well, that uh, it is very established. So think of uh, equilibrium, for example. Uh, even if individual UTT functions satisfies all these nice conditions, like MS uh, conditions, uh, the e, e conclusion is not uh, such that you can get the uh, equilibrium comparison in terms of strong set order. Right. So here's an example of this uh, showing this. And so think of two player games. Okay, X1 is a strategy for all player one, and X2 is a strategy for player two. And B1 and B2 are best response uh, curves. Okay, so in this case, it's hap uh, it happened to be e e functions. Okay, and uh, um, the intersections of these best response curves constitute the equilibria, Nash equilibria. Okay, so think about um, think about the scenario in, in which the uh, environment changes uh, in such a way that. But the e, one's best response correspond, uh, function moves to the right. Okay, now this uh, uh, broken line, broken uh, curve. All right. So, for example, uh, we can we can make this kind of shift uh, 
in such a way as satisfying the MS condition. Okay. Now the set of uh, uh, equilibria are this uh, these white uh, 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 white rounds, all right, and uh, uh, compare these black dots and the white dots. These are equilibria before and after the change of the e e uh, uh, of the environment. Uh, they are not in the strong set of domination relationship. Okay, so intuitively, because the B one uh, moves uh, up, I, well, moves to the right. Uh, we would like to kind of say, we, so we suspect that uh, there's a sense in which, you know, the, this uh, new set of equilibria should be sort of higher than the uh, old equilibria, but uh, uh, despite this intuition, a strong set domination does not happen. So for example, take, take uh, um, this point and this point. So this is the, the old, one of the old equilibria. Uh, this one is the, the one of the new equilibria, uh, and uh, check if uh, uh, the uh, soup or the, the join of these two points are uh, in the uh, one of the new equilibria. So that's one of the conditions needed for a strong set domination, and it's not working here because if you take this point and this point and take the join, then it's here. This is equilibrium from the old set, but not the uh, new set. Okay. However, uh, weak set domination happens here. Okay, so what did the mixed set domination say? Uh, takes any point. So say this point, uh, we want the second, uh, one of the second uh, equilibria, new equilibria should be to be higher. And this is satisfied by this point and likely downwards. Okay, so take any uh, point from the new set of equilibria. Uh, we should be able, to, we must be able to find a one of the old equilibria uh, that is lower and that uh, this is a point. Okay, so the weak set uh, order uh, actually is working here. Okay. All right. So, so what what am I trying to say here? Well, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, in even in a very well behaved uh, uh, model like this one, so it's Nash equilibrium in two person games uh, with all the nice uh, 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 conditions um, like MS uh, Shannon type conditions, so we can still not get the strong set uh, 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 comparison uh, of equilibria. So then uh, we kind of ask the sort of a, a, a question now. Now then, let's take this weak set of domination as the sort of desired conclusion in terms of the uh, monoton compact statics. Then we ask uh, what kind of conditions will guarantee the equilibria or other pre economic prediction uh, to move in terms of uh, move in the right manner in terms of weak set order. Okay. So we call it uh, weak mountain combative statics and uh, WMCS for short. Okay. And because compared to the MS and uh, previous, uh, most previous uh, uh, literature, so because we weakened the desired conclusion from strong set uh, domination to weak set domination. So we should be able to, in principle, uh, weaken the conditions we need uh, in terms of primitives, uh, okay, to establish uh, WMSES. And it turns out to be the case, uh, as it turns out. Um, so we ask this question in many different uh, uh, economic situations. So uh, first, uh, individual choices, but then we go to the Pareto optimal choices, games, and to side matching. So due to time constraints, uh, I don't uh, think that I can talk about all of them in detail, but uh, let me try. Okay. So uh, I, we we ask these questions, and in in this process, so uh, sort of side product is that well, uh, we find well. Um, we find a new uh, uh, fixed point theorem. Well, actually, new is a little bit uh, too much to say because uh, most of what we think we thought we found was actually later found to be actually covered by existing uh, fixed point theorem. But anyway, we strengthen some, uh, some of it uh, uh, by ourselves. And anyway, so so in order to fit this weak uh, MCS, uh, we we also find the corresponding kind of. Um, variation of Tarski's fixed point theorem. And that turns out to be useful for uh, finding uh, existence, establishing existence of Nash equilibria in games and the modern uh, uh, competitive sets in games, as well as two-side matching. All right. Uh, okay. So that's 
pretty much what we do. And the uh, remaining 40 minutes will be just be spent on sort of formalizing what I just said. Okay, uh, so I guess it may be good time for me to pause for a few seconds for questions, if you have any. Are there already some questions? So you can just unmute yourself. I think as nobody is reacting. Um, okay, so yeah, okay. Now let me, let me go to the uh, model then actually. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so uh, I said that, well, I have, I, we have, we analyze individual choices. Okay, so this is a classical problem uh, as in, 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 in MS. And also uh, Kwan Stratulvich did it for a certain subset of uh, choice uh, set. Um, so let me not spend too much time on this part because, well, um, because uh, our focus is more on the equilibrium and other uh, uh, economic predictions. But let me just say that, well, we have uh, some, so as expected, well, compared to uh, MS and Q, uh, Kua and Stolovici, so we also give necessary and sufficient condition for individuals optima to uh, 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 move uh, in terms of weak set order, but uh, the condition is of course uh, weaker than those uh, ne needed for the uh, strong uh, MCS. Okay, so let me let me not state even state the uh, formal uh, uh, results here. So let me now talk about something which is for, uh, to our uh, to our knowledge new. Okay, so now we look at Pareto optimal choices. Okay. So think of, here's a model. So think of a collective of individuals. So I is a finite set of individuals and uh, you know you have some X, which is a set of social alternatives, all right? And uh, assume that it's, it, it's uh, ended with uh, partial order, okay? And uh, you, you sub I is UTT function for agent I, player I, okay, well, individual I, and P of U is a set of prior optimal choices under UTT function profile U. Okay, so this is a usual, very standard uh, sort of social choice uh, problem, okay? And uh, our question is, um, what happens to the set of Pareto optimal choices when um, uh, uh, individuals uh, UTT function changes in a certain manner? Uh, okay, in other words, in what kind of, uh, uh, under what kind of conditions over uh, UTT functions U and V, can we say that the set of Pareto optima, uh, optimal choices moves uh, uh, according to this uh, set order W uh, weak, weak set uh, domination? Okay, so that's a question. Okay. Ah, so one thing to note is that in case you are not necessarily interested in social choice problem per se, um, of course, uh, Pareto optimal choices can also be interpreted as a sort of outcome of certain individual. Uh, when the individual has uh, incomplete preferences. So this, uh, so let me note that because, partly because that sounds like a possibly interesting uh, interpretation, but also because we will later talk about games and it turns out that uh, our our analysis can be sort of uh, accommodate uh, uh, players uh, whose UTT, is, uh, whose behavior is described by this incomplete preferences. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, uh, part of the uh, reason that we are interested in Pareto optimal choices. Okay, so um, so what conditions do we need for establishing this WMCS for Pareto optimal choices? And uh, one guess uh, is okay. How about uh, uh, MS conditions? So uh, namely single crossing and quasar supermajority. And uh, so uh, we need to be a bit careful because we need some. Uh, turns out we need some additional condition, topological conditions actually. Um, okay. Um, so um, here is an example which shows that um, UTT function satisfies uh, uh, MS condition, but the, this prediction fails um, when the is choice set uh, is not compact. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is perhaps not too surprising. So let me not spend too much time on this particular example. Let me actually state what is true, however. Okay. So oh, here's the first result. Okay, so uh, suppose for simplicity for the moment, well, actually that's actually important question, uh, uh, assumption. So begin with a simple case where 
uh, this uh, set is one dimensional, i.e., well, this this x is totally ordered. Okay, so choices are ordered. Uh, uh, okay, not just partially ordered. In that case, it turns out that the conditions are very simple. So here's a result. Uh, suppose that this x uh, is compact and uh, these utility functions, okay, so u and v are profile of utility functions, one for each individual, okay. Each person's utility, both under u and v, are upper semi-continuous, okay. And secondly, um, each function, this v, well, for each agent i, uh, v sub i, single crossing dominates u sub i, okay. So this is uh, a MS condition, basically. Then uh, it turns out that the set of part optima uh, moves up when the uh, UTT profile changes from U to V in terms of weak set domination. Okay, so that's a desired result. And so our conjecture, which I, uh, is that uh, as long as uh, each part on the UTT satisfies a, a you know, single crossing, um, which kind of says that you know people tend to like a higher options, right? Uh, roughly speaking, then uh, you know it turns out indeed that Pareto optimal also moves in this natural direction. Okay. So let me quickly show the proof. Uh, okay, proof sketch. Okay. Uh, all right. So note that we are focusing on the case of single dimensional uh, space. Okay. So. So it's, you know, we can talk about the infimum of uh, the part, uh, uh, part of my choices. Uh, okay. So what we, uh, okay. So uh, uh, note the uh, following, uh, uh, following uh, fact. Okay. Uh, okay. So take any outcome X, which is, Strictly smaller than infimum of part optimal choices under UTTU. Then, by definition, this is part dominated by something else, because otherwise it's not, you know, it's at least as big as the infimum of the part efficient uh, outcomes, right? Uh, and then, uh, then, um, so we can show under uh, under compactness that this X is dominated by something, but actually it is to dominated by something x prime, which itself is prior to optimum. Okay, I guess that's that's not too too surprising. But then remember, uh, I have taken x to be even smaller than uh, the infimum all the uh, all the prior to optimal uh, choices. So in particular, compared to this uh, dominating uh, outcome x prime, uh, x prime is strictly higher than x. Okay, uh, what do we know? Well. Now, remember that uh, we are thinking of a change of utility functions from u to v, such that v sort of likes likes to uh, uh, likes higher uh, outcome even better, right? So, uh, namely single crossing, uh, right? So that means when the, uh, each person's utility function changes from u to v, then uh, because even under the utility e e function u, um, the, the agent liked uh, uh, x prime to x x and x prime is higher. That means uh, under the new utility function, uh, the, this same agent uh, likes x prime better than x. Okay, which is that uh, this x point x is Pareto dominated again by x prime under uh, this new utility function v. That the, which what did we just show? We showed that. Take any point which is smaller than the infimum of the uh, pi to optima uh, under the uh, old utility function. Now, under new function v, x is also pi to dominated. So that means the infimum only moves up weakly. Okay. And by a symmetric argument, we can also show that the e supremum also moves up when the e utility function sort of moves up, right? And basically, that we are done. So both uh, both uh, infimum and uh, supremum uh, moves up, uh, moves to the right uh, when the UTT function sort of moves up. So that means uh, um, the, that means that we accept domination. Okay. Any question about the proof or any other part so far? Okay. Okay. So uh, okay. So uh, we are good. Uh, but. Remember, we have importantly used the uh, fact that uh, this, uh, in the previous result, 
that the choice set X itself is totally ordered, okay? Uh, where did I use it? Well, in the proof, I just uh, said that, well, we have infimum and uh, any point that is sort of like uh, outside is like either higher or lower than these points. So we can all, always order these points. So that was a kind of crucial for this argument. How about the case in which uh, this uh, choice set is just, you know, uh, some general lattice, all right? It turns out that the conditions are much more complicated. So uh, still we have some sufficient conditions. So let me just uh, show it here. Uh, so we need the following. So firstly, this X is uh, not only a lattice, but it's actually, well, compact lattice, but also convex. So we, we think of a convex set. And secondly, the conditions imposed on UTT functions are much stronger here. Uh, like before, we assume uh, these UTT functions are upper semi-continuous, but in addition, we assume uh, it, they are concave functions, okay, which did not appear in the previous result, and super modular, and uh, also uh, the new UTT function V increasing difference dominates U. Okay, so super majority and the increasing dominance, uh, difference dominance. So these are the conditions used by a Milgram robot, uh, okay, uh, earlier than Milgram Shannon. Under these conditions, we can show that the Pareto optimal uh, moves in the uh, weak, uh, weak set uh, order. Uh, so many of you uh, might be puzzled by why we uh, impose these conditions, right? So super majority and uh, increasing difference domination are, well, stronger uh, conditions than the quasar supermajority and single crossing. So they are kind of cardinal version, cardinal strengthening of these uh, ordinal conditions, all right? And if you, and from Milgram Shannon, so, you know, basically the, um, part of the important point about this monotone combative statics is that, well, these are the sort of ordinal, so the theory is kind of like, can be created by, pretty much ordinal conditions, not cardinal uh, conditions. And why do we have these cardinal conditions here? Um, the short answer, unfortunately, is that, well, uh, our proof needs these conditions. And honestly, we do not know whether uh, we can generalize this, uh, this uh, result if we weaken uh, this supermajority and the increasing differences to the uh, ordinal versions. Um, at least the proof uh, uh, actually needs it in a crucial manner. So let me actually show, uh, talk a little bit about the proof idea uh, to just give a sense as to why. Okay, so the proof turns out to be actually a little bit more difficult than we initially thought. So we ended up having uh, another paper, uh, which whose result is borrowed uh, to show uh, our uh, MCS result. So here's a result from uh, uh, our paper, uh, plus uh, Chris Ryan um, from UBC. Uh, okay, so what does it say? So the, the general sort of uh, idea of uh, our proof is the following. So we kind of know, I mean, uh, there's a sense in which I think um, the Pareto Optima is related to, uh, uh, you know, uh, maximization of weighted welfare, right? So, uh, i.e. the average UTT with some weights in, uh, put on different, uh, different weights uh, put on different in individuals, right? And uh, so if we do that, the, instead of looking at the Pareto Optima, uh, you know, we can kind of think of the e e ana analysis of Pareto Optima as if it, it is a, uh, maximizer of uh, one representative agent UTT function. So that is a sort of idea, okay? But then if you change the weight uh, imposed, uh, imposed on different individuals, then, you know, you can, you could uh, perhaps uh, cover all the Python optima, right? And for individuals, uh, uh, UTT maximization, you know, uh, MS uh, result uh, can be applied, okay? To say that, you know, uh, when individual UTT function changes from one to another in a single crossing and uh, manner, then you know the uh, uh, that optimum will move up uh, in a um, in a, um, a strong set order. So that was a sort of idea. However, uh, the difficulty here is that it turns out that uh, in a general setting, like uh, you know, um, like here. Um, 
actually, it is not true that the set of all Pareto optimal choices uh, can be described as a uh, as, uh, maximizer of, uh, of weighted social welfare, actually. So necessary conditions and sufficient conditions are well known, respectively, actually. So for example, uh, in MWG, uh, there's a result saying that if uh, the e, e, think of a weighted social welfare, i.e. average the, uh, 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 so weighted average of individual utilities, where the uh, weight for each person is strictly positive, then uh, any maximizer is Pareto optimal, optimum. But then it turns out that some uh, uh, Pareto optimal choices uh, can be described in this way. Okay, so some agents uh, might uh, need to uh, have uh, zero weight. Okay. But on the other hand, uh, if you allow for zero weight to be imposed uh, posed to some uh, uh, individuals, then you know uh, 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 the maximizer of such uh, weighted welfare is not necessarily a price optimal, which is kind of intuitive because uh, some people might the utility might be completely ignored, right? Uh, so it turns out that um, the sort of characterization of price optimal uh, is given by this uh, result, which says. Instead of just think about uh, one short maximization of weighted welfare, uh, we think of a sequence of uh, optimization problem. I.e., um, the, the, we say that uh, uh, outcome uh, an outcome is in part optimal uh, optimal if there exists a sequence of non-negative welfare weights. Okay, so this phi one is uh, a non-negative weight vector uh, over individuals. Phi two uh, is uh, another possibly different non-negative welfare weights and so on and so on. And the, the, the Pareto optimal outcome is a solution uh, to a, a sequence of these optimization problems. Namely, in the first round, uh, pick the, uh, look at the, all the possible outcomes and then uh, choose uh, all the maximizer of uh, wealth weighted welfare according to the first uh, social welfare weight. But then that that point might still include uh, Pareto optimal and Pareto suboptimal outcomes. But then among them, uh, use another social uh, 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 social welfare weight, uh, phi2, and then uh, 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 maximize that social welfare. So that will give a subset of uh, outcomes and so on and so on. And uh, after finite times of this uh, uh, this procedure, uh, it turns out that we uh, exactly get the uh, pilot optima. Okay. So uh, why? Okay. So with that caveat, the uh, basically again. So uh, how do we get the uh, uh, MCS for uh, pilot optima? Well, we apply MS without many uh, 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 repeatedly, basically. Okay, so uh, uh, MS says that, well, uh, if the e, 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 e utility function satisfies their conditions, then the uh, set of uh, optima, individual uh, uh, maximizers, uh, are, are related in terms of the strong set domination. Okay, and they actually say uh, also, uh, this result holds also when they, the, uh, the set, uh, set from which to choose uh, outcomes, uh, changes uh, between one problem to another. Namely, when uh, when as the UTT function changes from U to V in a single processing manner, uh, if the choice set uh, becomes higher for uh, for the problem associated with V, uh, in such a way that the choice set uh, itself uh, strong uh, strongly uh, strong set dominates the, uh, all the choice sets, then uh, there are there are the outcomes also or, or have this uh, strong set domination. So uh, why is that part of the result useful? That's because, well, in the first uh, optimization problem, um, the uh, uh, utility function changes in the uh, manner, so we can establish that uh, the uh, optimizer of the first, uh, first uh, pro uh, problem uh, is related uh, by this strong set domination. Now we use, uh, 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 according to this different choice set, we apply MS without again and again, so we get uh, this uh, uh, strong set uh, domination relationship for all the way until uh, we get the uh, uh, get to the part of optimal choices. Okay. Ah, okay. By the way, so uh, here is a reason why we impose 
uh, super majority and increase in difference domination. That is because uh, because the e, e super majority of a function and increasing dom, uh, increasing difference domination uh, both are preserved when we take the uh, average weighted average. But the same conclusion is not true uh, for the, e, the ordinal ones such as the e, e single crossing uh, 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 properties. So that is why. Uh, so, because we take this uh, weighted average of UTT functions and apply MS result, so our proof needed the is these cardinal uh, notions of um, uh, or, or such as the Milton robot. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we need to uh, so if we fix just if we fix just one sequence of uh, social weights welfare weights, then that only gets a subset of uh, of uh, Pareto optima. So uh, finally, we take the a union of uh, possible social weights, right? Uh, but then when we do it, um, it turns out that the uh, um, if we take if we take like uh, unions of uh, sets, pair of sets, uh, of sets, and uh, even if they have a strong set domination relationship, if you take a union, then strong set uh, domination relationship is not always preserved. But weak set uh, domination results are uh, relationship R, and hence we get the uh, weak set domination of the part uh, optima. And it turns out that uh, indeed, the, uh, under our conditions, it is not generally true that the uh, part optima are compared with respect to uh, uh, strong set domination. Okay, so that's a proof. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. So, oh, oh, um, okay, so I think, um, okay, so I'm, uh, I guess I'm spending a lot of time on this Pareto. So let me actually move on. So let me now uh, talk about fixed point theorem and how is it is used for games and uh, stable matching. Okay, so fixed point theorem. Okay, so this is a, a famous fixed point theorem by Tusky and Zhao. So Zhao has a, a generalization of uh, Tusky's fixed point theorem to the case of correspondence, right? But then uh, it turns out that this theorem is a little bit too strong, uh, okay, uh, to be applied for our case. And namely, um, okay, so the so they so fixed point theorem says that basically under uh, this and that condition, uh, the set of fixed points are non-empty. Okay, so that's a sort of like uh, idea. But uh, Zhao uh, allows for correspondence. Okay, so this is nice because we are talking about uh, set comparison. But then uh, he, he needs the uh, this function to be strong set monotonic, which is that if take uh, x and y both are input uh, to the, this correspondence x, then f of y. So let's say y is higher than x, then f of y this image uh, from the higher uh, input should be higher than uh, f of x in a strong set order. And that's pretty strong, uh, like we have seen. So now uh, we have our own uh, fixed point theorem, well, largely shown by Lee earlier, a mathematician, uh, actually. So uh, here's a result. So there are a lot of uh, conditions uh, written here, but the uh, uh, it basically is, uh, gives uh, alternative set of assumptions under which uh, we can uh, guarantee the uh, set of fixed points uh, is non-empty, okay? And in instead of looking at all the conditions here, let me just say a one word, okay, uh, main comparison. Um, so the EJAO, like I said, requires that this uh, correspondence satisfies a strong set of monotonicity, which is kind of strong. Now, um, in our version, the, uh, this correspondence needs to satisfy uh, only weak set of monotonicity. Okay, uh, I, actually it turns out that either upper weak set of monotonicity, which is one of the conditions needed for or, or weak set ordering, or the lower, so the other one, uh, okay, uh, one, the other of the two conditions uh, is actually enough for or showing the, the, the existence of a, uh, of a fixed point. Okay, so that's uh, sort of like, so, because we have, as we have seen, uh, some predictions uh, uh, can only have have weak set uh, 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 ordering uh, in the, its prediction. Uh, so this uh, fixed point theorem might be useful. So that's the idea. And indeed, uh, I show that one uh, 
uh, exam oh, uh, one example soon. And uh, ah, so another thing to say, however, is that uh, before that is that, well, as sort of expected, uh, we also have a compatible statics of fixed point theorem. And what does it say? Um, what does it say? So think of two, uh, two correspondences, F and G, and they also all satisfy this weak set monotonicity and others. But in addition, let's assume that uh, sort of G, this correspondence G is quote unquote higher than F in, in the following sense. So take any input X, then and uh, look at the image uh, under G and under F respectively, then uh, the, the image under the G is higher than uh, image uh, under F. So this is a sense according to the upper weak set uh, order. So this is a sense in which the correspondence is higher than uh, another correspondence. Okay. Then, uh, so for example, think of best response correspondence, for example, right? So uh, maybe the UTT function changes in such a way that the best response becomes higher. As in our uh, sort of two-player two game example we saw in the beginning of this talk. Okay, then what do we expect? Well, like in that example, uh, we expect the equilibria becomes higher. And uh, well, more generally, it turns out that if this correspondence is uh, G is higher than uh, correspondence F, then the set of uh, fixed point, which I denote by E of G, uh, this is a, a set of fixed points under uh, of correspondence G is higher than uh, corresponding fixed point uh, under the e, e correspondence F, right? Okay, so why does it matter? Okay, so now let me look at the, uh, introduce the class of games uh, where all these fixed point uh, analysis proves useful. Okay, so here's the application. Uh, so this is a class of games, uh, which we call uh, games with weak strategy complementarities. Okay, uh, again, the reference point is, of course, the, the games with strategy complementarities. Okay, um, the standard one. So the e game is described as a set of uh, agent I, uh, X, which is a set of strategy profiles. And uh, this uh, B sub I is a set of, is a best respondents correspondence for player I, okay. And then we say that the, this game uh, is a game with weak strategy complementarities if, well, uh, it satisfies certain regularity conditions, but uh, importantly, um, okay. So this best response correspondence is non-empty compact values and upper or lower weak set of montonic. Okay, so uh, so the usual uh, games with such complementarities um, impose uh, conditions like like MS condition indeed, uh, and that guarantees that best response correspondence moves in a, um, in a strong set order. And compared to that. The, we are only requiring that the, the correspondence satisfy weak set uh, uh, monotonicity rather than strong set of monotonicity. So that's the main difference. Another difference is that actually um, is that the we are not necessarily even assuming UTT function to be well defined here. I'm just directly imposing conditions over uh, the best response correspondence. Why is that? Well, like I said, uh, I we can allow for some some players to have incomplete preferences. So, recall from the Pareto optimal uh, choice analysis we saw before. You know, it can be interpreted as individuals not having uh, complete preferences and instead just choosing, you know, having uh, multiple uh, uh, several criteria and uh, any any outcome that is not dominated by all the criteria is maybe one of the chosen uh, outcomes. So for such a people with incompetent preferences, this can be a player here. So, you know, we have uh, earlier, we have seen today that uh, conditions under which such uh, part of small choices uh, it satisfies the weak set of monotonicity and uh, that can be the best response correspondence for a player. Okay, under these conditions, what can we show? Well, we can show that uh, basically use the e fixed point theorem and show that uh, this game, this game with uh, any game with weak strategy complementarities, 
uh, has a non-empty set of Nash equilibria. So how do we do it? It's kind of simple, uh, actually. So, you know, uh, in this class of games, we have assumed that this B, this best response correspondence, is weak set monotonic and uh, satisfies a bunch of other auxiliary conditions. Then that means, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, we have a fixed point theorem, uh, which can be applied to this uh, best response correspondence. And then, as we know, the Nash equilibrium uh, is a, you know, corresponds to a fixed point of best response correspondences, right? So basically, that's a direct application of the fixed point theorem we have seen. Okay. And in a similar vein, so we are, we already saw that there's a compatible statics of fixed point theorem, okay? Namely that if the best, if the uh, correspondence moves up, then correspondingly the fixed point, uh, 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 fixed point moves up, okay? And that translates to say that if uh, player's behavior changes in such a way that the best response correspondence moves up, okay, for any given strategy of others, then the Nash equilibrium also moves up in the same direction. Okay. And uh, um, so what does it matter? So let me just say uh, quickly that uh, this class of games <coughs> allow for some class of games uh, to be analyzed, uh, whereas the previous uh, uh, analysis did not work, uh, did not apply. So here's uh, the, uh, class of games we call generalized Beltran game. So generalized Beltran, uh, which is basically the Beltran game. So bunch, there are a bunch of farms and uh, has uh, uh, they set prices and uh, demand function. Uh, demand for each farm I is of course sort of no in, no increasing in he, its its own price and non decreasing in its uh, uh, other prices. Okay. So these are the usual one. And uh, for uh, uh, for the previous uh, analysis, as in, in, in MS, uh, we needed um, the uh, demand to be smooth, okay? Uh, and satisfies uh, things like uh, log supermajority. So, and uh, uh, instead we import this condition, okay? And okay, so I don't have too much time to explain this too much, but um, this condition turns out to be weaker. And in particular, we allow for demand to suddenly go down to zero. So that kind of discontinuity is allowed, okay? Uh, whereas the previous condition did not allow it, okay? And uh, uh, so what does that matter? Why is this discontinuous demand matter? Uh, demand, uh, discontinuity in the demand uh, uh, function matter? Well, the pure built on game uh, has this feature, right? So if my... Uh, if uh, my farm's price goes uh, just a little bit uh, higher than other prices, then you know uh, the, your demand goes down to zero suddenly. Okay, so that kind of uh, 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 discontinuity is still accommodated, and it turns out uh, even with this kind of con uh, as long as this uh, these two conditions are satisfied, and the best response correspondence actually is well uh, lower a weak set monotonic, and hence uh, we can uh, show the existence and of the equilibria, uh, and also we can do the compatible statics such as uh, if the marginal uh, cost for uh, 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 for a farm changes for farms changes uh, uh, and uh, goes up, then Nash equilibria goes up. Okay. So uh, uh, my apology that I don't have time to explain the detail, but basically that uh, uh, the matter of verifying that the a, a condition uh, for uh, weak MCS to be satisfied in this particular game, particular class of games. All right. Okay. Rita, I wonder if I could um, interrupt you for a second. And uh, yeah, um, sure. I, I see you're gonna to switch to matching now. Um, I wonder if you could say just a couple words about which results might not go through um, in general for um, this weaker class of games. Maybe that would help uh, sort of uh, yeah. frame <laughs> yes, some yeah. of the, yeah. Yeah, that's actually important. So I, I should have mentioned that actually. So, okay, so uh, uh, let's go back to the uh, fixed point theorem and that's, that can be, be transferred to the Nash equilibrium, right? So, uh, okay, so uh, Tusky and Jao's fixed point theorem imposes more conditions, but the conclusions are also stronger. So namely, uh, there's a fixed point. Uh, so the fixed point and the set is not empty and it's actually completely lattice. And in particular, that means there's a largest uh, equilibrium and smallest equilibrium. Now it, 
under our conditions, actually that is not true anymore. So the set of uh, fixed points are non-empty and it has a maximal point, but maximal just means that it's not dominated by others. So that means uh, it, it's possible that there's no uh, highest uh, uh, equilibrium. So that means there may be a bunch of, uh, bunch of fixed points uh, which are incomparable to each other. And correspondingly, e, 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 we, when we use this result to uh, uh, analyze Nash equilibria, uh, our uh, conditions only guarantee the existence of Nash equilibria, but it doesn't show that there's a highest Nash equilibria, lowest Nash equilibria. And uh, under MS, uh, of course, they, they are always higher, highest and lowest uh, Nash equilibria. So that's one, uh, that's one example of the conclusions that do not uh, hold in our case. I, I wonder if that's, that, that was the, the kind of question, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was uh, just trying to get a feeling um, and, nice. and hoping to have you say a little bit about um, what you give up. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, what, yeah. what's the cost of, of the weaker uh, conditions? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. well, so the comparative statics only works for the largest and the smallest equilibria. So that's the, that's the difference, yeah. Well, yeah, so for, MS for, yeah, for a maximal equilibrium, for example, um, yeah. you, can't, you can't necessarily argue that a, a selection from the set of maximal equilibria is, um, is increasing or something like that. Yeah, yep. That's right, that's right, right. So yeah, we, we can yeah, we can say that there's a there's a selection in such a way that this uh, selection uh, that moves uh, moves up, but then uh, but then you cannot say more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely right. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Great. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, okay. Uh, so if you uh, may, so let me just uh, use the remaining two minutes. Uh, for talking about the matching. Okay, so how do we do the matching? So, well, you know, uh, many of you probably know that matching uh, can be also or, or, or sort of characterized as fixed point of certain correspondence. That's not the best response correspondence in games, but it's kind of similar, okay? Uh, it's something called T, T, T mapping, okay? And largely, it, largely, this analysis has been done for the case in which the uh, this uh, uh, correspondence is a single value function, okay? And that, that is guaranteed when under the uh, standard assumption matching cases, which is that uh, the, each individual's choice is a function, okay? So we don't allow for indifferences, for example, okay? And, but now, now that we have this uh, fixed point theorem for our correspondence, so we can basically allow for uh, choices of each individual to be correspondences. So it can allow for things like uh, 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 schools which don't uh, necessarily rank every students, for example. So there are maybe ties and so on. Okay. And uh, another example, and in, in under some conditions, which I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have time. Uh, we can still uh, show the existence of a stable uh, matching, and also uh, we can uh, also do the comparative statics. Okay. And uh, why is that useful? It turns out that in addition to all these indifferences in each individuals, uh, we can think of something like multi-divisional organization. So imagine that the uh, organization has some budget uh, budget constraints, all right, uh, or like not, not, but it, it it has multiple divisions, and each division has a sort of a linear or sort of well-defined utility like responsive differences, but then the other organization. Uh, there's a sort of uh, organization itself uh, is indifferent uh, or unable to decide how many positions to allocate to different uh, 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 different divisions. So it has a big number of indifferences. Even in that case, uh, we can show that this correspondence uh, actually constitutes our sufficient conditions and hence a stable matching can be obtained. And a similar one is that matching with constraints. So. Uh, I have been working on this problem a little, uh, in multiple papers. So, for example, uh, in medical match, the, uh, there's a regulation by the government saying that in each region of the country, uh, you know, the total number of uh, players, uh, of, of the uh, residents who can be placed uh, is upper bounded. But then 
that that sort of leaves the question of how many of the seats in this allocated this region will be allocated to specific hospitals. Okay, so there's a sort of indifferences here. Okay, but then um, so or then because of that, the usual or uh, task fixed point theorem uh, uh, does not guarantee uh, the existence and analysis of still much, but uh, with our uh, our, uh, our correspondence, it turns out that if you think of this uh, choice of the region as a kind of a choice correspondence, which allows for a lot of indifferences and the multivalidness, then it turns out that we can still use our uh, uh, fixed point characterization of stable match and get uh, the existence and the compatible statics of stable match in this setting. Okay, but I don't think I have the uh, unfortunate time to explain more than that. So let me actually con uh, conclude before I uh, violate the social norm too much. Okay, so conclusion again. So we looked at the weak monotone complex statics and uh, uh, because the conclusion we require is weaker than uh, some of the uh, existing ones. So we get sort of like weak, weaker sufficient conditions for our theory to apply. Uh, in many different settings, like uh, Pareto optimal choices, games, uh, and matching theory. So, and I guess that's that's all for, for today. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Fuhiti and also Chris, and uh, thank everybody for the participation. Let me announce the next talk in two weeks with Piotr Dvorak from Northwestern University, who's talking about redistributive allocation mechanisms. And uh, now I hope that Fuhidu is still uh, available for any remaining questions uh, that you might want to ask, although the official time is now over. And again, thank you everybody who was here. Um, you're welcome to stay and ask any remaining questions. Um, also, thank we are out time. of time. Fuhidu, maybe if I could follow up just a little bit um, uh, yeah, sure, please. Uh, on, um, um, so first, I just, you know, this is a fantastic paper. You have so many nice results and it's such a natural question, um, particularly for equilibrium problems, you know, like you were saying, as opposed to individual choice problems. Um, and, and so I, I, I guess a little bit, I, I'm, I'd like to hear your thoughts about um, where the differences are. So for example, um, if you don't know that the set of equilibria has a largest element and a smallest element, um, then what um, does that lead to other results that, that were true, uh, say for supermodular games that might not necessarily be true under these weaker conditions? I don't know if you guys have thought much about that. So, so one was obviously the, the the result about comparative statics for that particular selection, um, but but um, sometimes there were other results ab about having those bounds on the on the set of equilibria that that could be useful. And I wonder if you've thought at all about. So, um, so for example, what do we do not have? I think so. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm answering your question directly, but so, uh, so, um, but, uh, so in games, for example, in under super majority and uh, the like, uh, the highest and lowest equilibria are also sort of the highest, uh, correspond to the highest strategies uh, after the, after the uh, iterative elimination of the study, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as I know, uh, we do not have that result. And uh, I don't actually remember if we have any counter example to this, uh, uh, this result under our condition, but we highly, well, actually, actually, because we don't even have a highest or lowest uh, uh, Nash equilibria, uh, so I highly suspect that there's no nice way to even state this result, actually. So this is probably one of the results that should not hold under our weaker condition. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not completely sure whether you are more interested in the equilibrium itself rather than this uh, other I, I was just curious if you, what you had thought about <laughs> where the differences were, just also to, you know, there's so many results that, that do carry over, um, but then certainly, you know, some things uh, is, don't hold. And so I'm, I'm just curious mm -hmm. to, if, how much you guys had thought about those differences and um, 
So I yeah, see, no, that that's really helpful. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so this is another. Yeah, this is uh, another thing that yeah, this uh, other behavior in games. So uh, I model behavior in games. So we do not have many sort of results, and we highly suspect it doesn't work. Uh, oh, actually, one thing I forgot to mention, however, is that um, so mostly we are only relying on this fixed point uh, when it comes to the analysis of the game. And uh, under our condition, we don't even have a sort of convergent. So the, mm -hmm. we cannot always iterate the, 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 the correspondence to even get the fixed point. But uh, we, we do have uh, some sufficient conditions. Uh, ah, OK, yeah. Actually, yeah, mm -hmm. so this one actually holds. So uh, we, we have enough uh, continuity, like uh, certain order continuity. Uh, then actually the iterative uh, uh, iteration of the uh, correspondence actually it, it converges, to, um, uh, converges to a fixed point. So to that extent, uh, we may be able to say something like, uh, you know, if we think of this F to be composed of best response correspondence, then uh, I suspect that this will translate uh, to saying that a certain, uh, at least some version of the best response chronotype dynamics uh, that will result uh, in a, a, that, well, after possibly infinite iteration, uh, it reaches a Nash equilibrium. So this is probably one of the things that actually carries over uh, to our case. Uh, but others, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not too optimistic, honest, uh, honestly. Hmm. Uh, Jingwu, I wonder if you have something to add, maybe? Yeah, so we, you cannot hope that uh, you can reach the uh, maximum or maximum or the largest equilibrium ah, beginning from the highest point in the domain, highest strategy ah, yes. profile. Uh, yeah, actually, that, right, that's yeah. one of the conjectures that's we strong. had on yeah, the scale, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So even if we, we start from the highest point, from the lattice, and then iterate, um, even ca in cases in which it uh, uh, it reaches uh, uh, one of the fixed points, uh, it could be actually mm -hmm. uh, not uh, maximal even. So yeah. Uh, yeah, this particular generalization didn't work actually, unlike the more like, uh, yeah, some other case like yours. Mm. Yep, yep. There have also been two questions in the chat. So maybe uh, Christoph, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Otherwise, I can read it, or Fujito can read it himself. So, the question is whether uh, your last fixed point theorem can be applied to matching markets with continuous transfers. With continuous transfers, um, so we we only thought a little bit. Uh, so, because so yeah, the, the reason we thought it might be useful. Uh, okay, so the short answer is no. I mean, not that I know of, unless Jim will actually remember better. Um, so the uh, suspicion is that it might be useful because like I kind of emphasized, uh, our fixed point theorem allows for uh, choice correspondence to be sort of, well, correspondence rather than the, uh, uh, rather than the uh, single value function. And uh, the uh, matching without transfer uh, oftentimes assumes the single, uh, Valued, uh, validness of choice, but uh, with continuous transfer, usually, well, typically the choice itself is uh, actually multi-valued. So for that reason, we suspected that this method might be useful. Um, but then after, after a few trial, uh, I believe that we didn't find any, any particular result, but uh, that's, that's the end of my recollection actually. Yeah, that's also my recollection. We were trying to find some sufficient condition, yeah, on the change of the utilities that guarantees uh, the uh, change of the optimal location in a weak and monotonic way. But we couldn't find any reasonable condition for that. Okay, so the second question was by Martin Bobby. Marty, do you, Martin, do you want to ask it? Yeah, it's more a clarifying question. Uh, so this, this topology that you impose, so the compactness and the other things, is this related, uh, the topology to the ordering, like something like the order topology or ah. independent? 
Uh, yes. Uh, th yeah, thanks. It's, it's a very important question. I didn't uh, explain, actually. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so, yes. So the so you uh, notice that uh, our fixed point theorem, which this one, uh, imposes some uh, uh, topological conditions, which is, by the way, kind of may may strike some of you as a strange because the Tarski Zhao is purely order theoretic. So and uh, so in that sense that uh, this uh, uh, theorem is not totally a sort of generalization of Tarski or Zhao. And uh, that was a sort of background. And uh, now answering your question, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, is there any relationship between the order and the uh, topology? And uh, yes. So we actually assume that the um, how is it called the, the this uh, the uh, topology is regular in the sense that uh, so any take any point and then look at all the points that is uh, 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 weakly higher than that point. So that should be closed uh, according to the uh, uh, according to our topology, and also the if you take any point and look at all the lower points, uh, weak lower point, that should be also uh, closed under our topology. So it's uh, I think it's all the topology is an example of that. And yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. And uh, that that's actually important because, like I said, this makes our our uh, result, the uh, hypothesis for our fixed points to be not exactly weaker than uh, uh, Tatsuki or Zhao. Uh, uh, however, let me also emphasize actually that, uh, so we typically assume things like compactness and so on uh, of this, uh, uh, according to the uh, correspondence under this um, uh, topology. But uh, in special cases of like Euclidean topology, for example, uh, these conditions are automatically satisfied as long as the, the, as the correspondence uh, uh, is like, um, sorry, the, 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 so, sorry, the, 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 so for example, uh, the, the compactness of uh, 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 X is, uh, uh, the space is automatically satisfied if uh, uh, X uh, is a complete lattice. Uh, if uh, under the uh, Euclidean topology, actually. So, for example, so uh, in some of the special cases, actually, these are uh, uh, genuinely weaker uh, hypotheses than the existing ones. Okay, anybody else with a question or comments? Okay, I think everybody has learned as much uh, as they could. <laughs> uh, so, thank you very much again uh, for being here today. Um, spending the night or the early morning with us. Um, and yeah, thanks um, again so much. Yeah, so um, yeah, and uh, thanks to the audience. And I think we can close the um seminar for today. <laughs>